Okay, so this is my um, end product, if you like, from my previous two films where I took, for those of you who haven't watched them yet, um, I took basically a bag of scraps and I chopped them all up onto a small piece of fabric. Oops, they're running away from me. Onto a small piece of fabric, chopped up all those little beautiful colours and then we used some soluble fabric, some very fine soluble fabric, which is this, pinned that over the top, <coughs> excuse me, and stitched into it. And then we washed away the soluble fabric and we were left with what was left was stitched. And then I stitched some more into it to make sure it's all held together. I added different coloured stitching. I've added some silver and some green and some purpley colours. So we've got this really nice mix of colours going on. So what I've made is a little needle case and I've also made a little book. And I'm going to show you those in detail. And I'm really pleased with them. I think it's been very exciting to do because I didn't quite know what was going to happen with the fabric. I didn't quite know what was going to happen when I dissolved this away. And so that's all been very satisfying. So I hope you'll enjoy it. I'm just going to show you now how I went about sort of producing these or to, you know, showing you them in greater detail, I should say. Um, this one I go into a bit of detail on the making and the rest of it is... Um, well, it's fairly self-evident, really. So I'll show you that bit next, and then we'll see where that takes us. That's what I always say. We'll see where that takes us, because I never really know when I'm filming these things. I never know quite what I'm going to say, and I never quite know where it's going to take me. So what I've got here is I've cut my lovely piece of fabric that I've created with my embellisher and all my free machine embroidery. I'll show you the back, and you can see all the stitching that I've done. Um, since I showed it to you last time. I think it looks quite cool now. And I've used my rotary cutter to sharpen up the edges very carefully because these are really, really sharp blades. And I've cut a piece of nice lining fabric that I'm going to put the two together, pin them together like this. And then I'll be able to take them over to my sewing machine and I'll leave a little gap there, I think. That's not a very good pin, but never mind. I will just slowly pin these together and then I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine, which is a very odd thing for me to do. I don't often sew with my normal foot on, I have to say, because I'm usually free machining like a good one. And just very occasionally, I do actually make things for the house. I make cushions um, and odd things like this. So I'll just pin that in. So. That's ready now and I'll take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew all the way around with a probably a quarter inch seam, something like that. It doesn't need to be too, it's not going to be, you know, um, like a functional seam, so it can be fairly tight in. So I'll do that next and then I'll turn it inside out and show you it again. So that's what it looks like now that I have taken the pins out, I've stitched all the way around but I've left a little gap there so I can turn it inside out. I'm going to actually, before I do that, I'm going to just chop these little corners off because that'll make it uh, have nicer corners when I turn it the, right, the other way around. So we'll do that, nice and easy. And I'm just going to... Turning it inside out is always a bit of a fiddle with these things because it's quite small and because I'm a bit concerned that nothing rips, especially the uh, because the lining fabric's quite... Um, it's quite a fraying sort of fabric. So I'm just going to keep turning it round like this gently, poking it with my fingers so as not to damage it. And eventually, after a bit of a bit of wrestling, it'll begin to turn itself round and become uh, flat again. Now I've got this wonderful tool. My mum gave me some fantastic things back in the day when I was, well, probably when I was a teenager probably in doing sewing she gave me this wonderful thing which is a thing for poking out the corners of things because it's got quite a nice point on it but it's not too pointy or you can use the other end as well just to get it started and you can kind of run that along the edges run it along those seamy bits there like that so I'm just going to poke this a little bit but I want to do it very carefully and gently I'm poking mostly onto the the thick fabric here onto the bit that I've stitched rather than um, the lining fabric because I know that lining fabric from bitter experience 
can rip quite easily. So we'll do it like that, like that. So what I'm going to do next, I'll have to do next, is I'll have to get that pressed a little bit. So I'll press it so that the lining is nice and straight inside. And then I'm going to also, I'll have to turn that inside on itself and um, get that pinned. Oops, just do that. And I'll be able to then do it. I'll, sorry, that does look pretty wonky, but I will straighten it up. I will then do a nice top stitch all the way around and then that'll be held together like that. And then it'll be ready for me to put some lovely um, bits of felt inside for putting your needles in. So now what I have done is I've more or less completed this little needle case. Um, what did I do? I showed you how I stitched round to put the two sides together and I then top stitched round it to make it all nice and tidy. I then realised, ha ha ha, that I hadn't put my little my little loopy thing in so I had to unpick a very tiny bit there, pop that in and then I've just top stitched over that so that's now held in place. I was really lucky I found a bit of beautiful silver elastic -y stuff that was just kicking about in the house. I think it was a bit of a packaging of something, some little present or something and I just thought oh that's absolutely perfect. Um, I cut two little bright green pieces of felt here. They're not quite perfect in their cutting but you know what I really like that. I don't like things to be perfect and when you actually put them together that's that's fairly neat like that so I quite like that. So I've chosen this lovely green button to go on because I feel as though that really picks up some of the greens. Not quite the same green but I like it because it's giving a pop of colour and it's kind of giving a hint of a connection with that. So I'm going to sew that on next. I've got a nice bit of thread here. It's very funny all this filming is sort of a balancing act. Currently I'm sitting uh, sort of either side of the camera to try and um, get everything in the right place. I need to work out where that's going actually before I do anything else. I'm going to put that about there. So I'm not exactly in the most comfortable position but I also, I took my glasses off because then I can see the screen more easily because it's close to my nose and I can actually see the screen and see what's happening on down here. See what I'm actually filming. Through the through the lens of the camera, so it's all this kind of all this kind of stuff that I'm just kind of learning about, really. So what I've done is I've just gone and got my glasses and put my glasses back on, so I can actually see what I'm doing. Because I thought, well, actually, watching somebody sewing a button on might just be quite nice. We don't often do things like this, do we? We sit, we're so busy rushing around doing stuff in our busy, busy lives, and I just thought, well, actually. This might be a very gentle, therapeutic thing to watch somebody doing. So I'm just popping that back under there. It's a bit fiddly because it's quite a big button. And I suppose you could do this. Some people do buttons with like a double thread going on. But I think actually I quite like a single thread because then I have more control over it. And also it means when you're sort of knotting it and finishing it off um, you haven't got quite such a big knot to kind of deal with it's not going to make a big knot in your fabric I'm also trying my best um, not to actually get it onto the inside of the lining it doesn't really matter I don't think it really matters that much but um, as long as you are happy with how it looks, that's all that matters. And I decided on this lovely turquoisey colour. It seemed to go quite nicely with the green, and it seemed to be just something that toned in with everything on the on the button itself. I thought about a purpley colour, but I didn't really like that. So this is this is to me this is what it's all about. It's um, you making choices, you choosing, and it's got nothing to do with anybody else when you're making something it's all to do with you choosing what pleases you um, too often in our lives we're thinking about what anybody else is thinking about us and what we're doing and what we're wearing and kind of what we look like and I think when it comes to making anything um, it's actually your opinion that matters the most because even if you're giving it away, and if you're giving it as a gift, 
or you're selling it or whatever, as long as it pleases you, then it's going to please somebody else. That's my take on it anyway. So right, I have stitched that through quite a few times. I think that's pretty strong, so I'm just going to go wrapping round and round and round. I don't know whether this is how you sew buttons on or not, but I, this is how my mum taught me to sew buttons on. So that's, uh, that's a bit tough, that bit. Ooh, I, need, I really need um, to put my thimble on. Using a thimble is quite helpful at this point. So, right, that's just finishing it off. There we go. I like to finish it off well so that nothing comes undone. There we go. There we go. Nicely done. And we'll just slip that off under there. Put that out of the way. And there we go. How, how pleasing pleasing is that. So this is made out of scrappy bits of fabric, a bit of soluble fabric over the top, some stitching and then some basic stitching round and there you go you've got a really pretty, in fact look shall we, shall we christen it? There you go how beautiful is that a matching, a matching needle and thread. So here's the scrap of leftover so I had that big piece there and I had this little scrappy bit here and I actually re-feathered the edges because I did a cut edge and I didn't want it to look all cut I actually added a few more bits of fabric on there I, I have to confess I did that with my embellisher but you, you know you, I could have done some soluble fabric on it and I also used the embellisher just to um, soften the edges of it so that it all looks nice and sort of raggedy and it's only a tiny piece and I made myself a little book out of what four pieces of watercolour paper so I cut four pieces, I tore them with a ruler so I'll get nice rough edges I poke them with a, a bradle, you can use a bradle or a just a, a sharp biggish needle to poke holes in them I did a simple, I can't remember what it's called, it's a simple sort of book stitch um, and I used some gorgeous, this is beautiful I'll show you what this is, this is some lovely lovely flax thread that I bought quite a number of years ago at Woolfest up here in Cumbria we have Woolfest every year and this was somebody selling vintage flax um, from an old shop um, in Sweden or somewhere and I bought some of these and I just decided that would be really lovely to make little books with so that was what this was made from and the other two that I made um, which I had made previously, same same principle. This is a piece of embellished fabric with just some little scraps from one of my jars. This is a bit of painted lace on it, just stitched on and that actually goes, I wanted it to go over the back like that so it wasn't all just cut off there. And this is a piece, would you believe, this is a piece of somebody's free machine embroidery from a beginner's workshop with me <laughs> from years ago and I've painted it with some, um, I think it's just some emulsion and then it's got a bit of um, printing on top in turquoise and I just I had it kicking about and I thought, you know, I'm going to sew that on there. So that's a really nice little book. So this one I did, um, I'd already put a piece of lace down it like that and I'd stitched it on with just a creamy coloured thread. But then I've been looking through all my scraps and I found this bit of grey which was um, um, I've done some sort of lichen-y stuff using my embellishing machine and I thought well I'll add some copper into that that kind of adds to it I had some of my printed newspaper which is from when I do my scrapbooks and I do painting and printing I always end up with bits of newspaper with lovely paint patterns and splashes on them so I just tore that into a nice shape and on the back I decided I'd make it a bit like the front with a line of stitching and I put a piece of a second piece of watercolour paper in there. But look at this, isn't this lovely? This is free machine embroidery at its finest. This is what I love to see. If you if you're making a wonky line, just add another wonky line. It's the greatest tip ever. And I say celebrate the wonk, celebrate it. Enjoy enjoy the wobble. Enjoy the fact that it's not completely straight and what people might call perfect. So the thread in here, which I did with my simple bit of stitching is this lovely linen. This is from a lady called 
well she calls her, her company is called Namolio and she's another one who comes to Woolfest so I'm looking forward to having Woolfest again we've missed it this year but this is just gorgeous and I thought well that's perfect for stringing up a book so I hope you enjoyed that that was a little insight into how I went about making these things um, as I say I may think about doing a workshop um, making little books at some point if anybody's interested just leave me a comment please do subscribe if you'd like to follow my videos please do subscribe because that gives me encouragement to know that there's people out there if you want to leave me a comment please do that as well if you want to ask me anything if you want to ask me to do a video on anything in particular you know just do leave me a, leave me a little note down below uh, as they say and um, subscribe hit the bell I believe is what you do when you want to be notified when my videos are coming in and um, that would just be great. I'm just loving doing this and I hope you're enjoying the results of it as well. I've had some thoughts about what my next sort of, sort of tranche of videos is going to be about and I will let you in on that secret in due course. So enjoy your week, have fun wherever you are and whatever you're doing and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing.